In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a two-part seamless mold to reproduce things. In this instance, it's going to be a human vertebra. It was legally obtained before you ask. Um, the reason I'm doing a two-parter is so that I don't have to cut this hole out. It's going to save me time and it's going to be a perfect reproduction because I'm going to be doing a manual version of rotocasting. With the mold and support shell, I'm going to be rotating it. This mold is going to be a little bit different than what you may have seen in other videos. I'm going to be creating a two-part support shell while I'm actually making this. Um, it's going to stay in the same box. It's going to be exactly the same shape. Um, so I'm going to use this as a base to put this other clay on. Um, Skelpie and monster clay will, you know, stick to each other, but not very much. Speaking of that, if you are going to ever be working with bone, and you need a divider wall for a two-part mold, do not use monster clay. This stuff will get into all the crevices, the air pockets, and any little detail in here is going to be filled in with monster clay at that point. Um, it, it's not fun to get out of there, and it's oftentimes going to ruin the bone. So what I recommend instead is Sculpey. Sculpey is going to do the exact same thing. It's going to adhere to it. It's going to make it, you know waterproof the the, the silicone is not going to go past that side but when you pull it off it's really easy and you've essentially got a push mold if you ever need the texture so that's what i'm going to be doing this is just a spacer on top of here so i'm going to be having i'm going to be working in reverse i'm going to be making the top part of my mold first here let me show you these two are going to be sandwiched on top of each other. I'm going to put a little bit of um, the Sculpey on here. I'm going to be making sure that the bone is lined up exactly the way I want. And I'm going to make a border wall all the way around the perimeter, dividing the bone probably right about here. Um, once that's done, I'm going to be pouring the silicone in after I add some register marks. You can do whatever you want with register marks, but really all they do help you get your mold back together perfectly. So if I embed this in the clay and I do a couple more of these, when I go to put the two sides of my molds together, that's going to snap right into place. Um, you need to do that for your support shell as well as the two pieces that come together for the mold. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my spacer in the mold, put this in here, and I'll explain what I'm going to do. All I did was put some uh, painter's tape and cardboard together to make this binding box. I measured around where I wanted to see things just to make sure I have enough place for my register marks. This is going to be using a lot more silicone than I want, but, you know, I'm going to be using this mold several times. Now, when I fill this up with silicone, let's just say my model is right there. Here's the bone. I'm going to put that much silicone on top. This is going to rest on top of it. This is pre-cured silicone. I'm going to put it on there when it's about three quarters of the way or halfway uh, cured. It's still tacky. Um, and then once it's fully cured, I'm going to be pouring resin in on top. It's going to form around this and be its own little register mark so that whenever I go to take that plastic out and put it back in, it'll snap right into place and it'll be the top of my support shell. Flip it over, exact same thing. I take out all the stuff that I've done here. That's why I just taped a piece of cardboard in. Um, it's going to hold its shape because I'm going to leave the uh, leave the resin in there. Flip it over, exact same thing. Pull it out, use some mold release to cover my, uh, my silicone. To separate silicone from silicone, you need a special mold release, like Ease Release 200, or you can make one using dish soap and isopropyl alcohol.
Now that I've taken these two pieces off, I, I sanded them down a little bit to get rid of any jagged edges. You don't want things poking your mold. Um, and then once you get one edge started, because it is going to be very stuck together, the rest kind of comes undone. So you can see our, our smooth little register mark. There's a second one. There we go. Register marks. You got the split there, which covers this. This is the top shallow portion, so we're not going to be pouring resin in here. We're going to be pouring resin in this side once I free this piece. Scoop out any residual clay that may have clung to the sides. Your first piece is going to pick up, like your first reproduction, is going to pick up all the little crap that gets stuck in here. All right, let's see if I mixed this long enough. I'm doing it by hand, but it's hit or miss. I kept um, checking this, which was the remainder that was in my cup. Um, I usually did you know, a little more than a quarter of an inch just to see when this was fully cured. Once this was fully white, I, I spun this for a little bit longer than I needed to just because I don't know how thick the inner wall was and the thinner your resin is poured, the slower it's going to cure. So hopefully, hopefully I did this right. We'll find out. <clears throat> Let's demold. As you can tell from my very well-kept area here, yeah, I have crap dumping all over itself. Okay, looking good so far. Minimal flashing. Not perfectly seamless, but close enough. You'll probably be able to peel it off with a fingernail. Yep, look at that.
require very, very, very little cleanup. That's awesome. This is exactly what I was hoping to show you guys. Uh, if anybody's actually watching. I, th I think I have like seven subscribers at this point because I don't really care. I just like to have my own record of what I'm doing here. Perfect. Aside from a little bit of fuzz that I need to clean up on the sides, this is an exact duplicate. I don't know if you can see that, but it's got the same markings. It'll fit together because it's the same piece. There's really no shrinkage. And I can do whatever I want. So now I have a duplicate I can work with. Sand this little area down. Not that it really needs it. Um, I'm going to make it look smoother, less, you know, bone-ish. I'll keep the general shape, but I'm going to smooth it way out. Anyway, that's how you do it.